Hello guys and welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology and as you guys saw on Facebook I was really trying to get this video out last night and unfortunately that just didn't happen something came up and I had to leave didn't get back till like 11 o'clock at night and at that point I didn't feel like making the video so it is the next day and I'm finally going to get this video out now a couple of you said you have been getting bored with some of my videos which is something I don't want to hear you know I've been doing a lot of unboxings and overviews and stuff like that uh, and I know a lot of you are subscribed to this channel for like the garage hill finds and and experiments. So today I have a nice little experiment lined up. It's going to be pretty quick, but I think it's still going to be uh, something that you guys are going to be interested in. I did try to hit a garage sale yesterday actually, and um, I, I hit a couple and there wasn't anything there. So I don't have anything to bring back and show you guys. I'm going to try again next week and I'm going to try to get something uh, so I can actually bring you guys with me. I, I want to buy something really discreet, like a pair of sunglasses with a camera built in. That way my hands are free when I'm driving and I don't have to carry around the Nikon D3300 because, you know, some guy flashing around this big camera is going to make some people nervous, raise some eyebrows, and it might freak the seller out and therefore I might lose the sale. Obviously, I don't want that to happen. So that's going to be about it for that. I don't want to ramble on about that subject too long. Let's go ahead and get down to the video. To my right, I have my E-Machine T1090 and today we're going to be checking out the performance of this thing while utilizing a solid state drive which I have right here. Before I go any further, let me go ahead and read off some system specifications. This is a 16 gigabyte King Spec solid state drive. I did benchmark this at one point. I believe the read speeds were around 200 megabytes per second and the write speeds were sitting around 90. We have 384 megabytes of PC133 SD RAM in the system. The system's rocking an Intel Celeron copper mine processor running at 900 megahertz. And we are using a Vision Tech 7000 video card with 64 megabytes of VRAM on board. Once again, this is the beefiest PCI video card I have. I have to throw this disclaimer out here every time because someone's like, whoa, why don't you use a GeForce uh, uh, 6200 or something like that? Well, I don't have one of those laying around in storage. Sorry, guys. And I don't have the money right now to go out and buy one just for this little experiment. So we're going to make do with that Vision Tech video card. Of course, I'm also using the, uh, the I think it's SIBA uh, SATA card in this system to use the solid state drive in the system because the system does not originally come with any SATA ports. And I think that's really about it as far as system specifications go. Now, I'm going to be running X or Zubuntu, sorry, I keep calling it Xubuntu, but Zubuntu 14.04. I tried to get Windows on this system, but due to the drive size, I ran into some issues. And you know what? Honestly, I'd rather just use some sort of Linux distro with this computer anyway. So that's what we're going to be using. By the way, guys, the SATA card that I am using is only capable of reaching SATA 1 speeds. I don't think I mentioned that beforehand. So this drive is going to be slightly limited. Uh, this computer only has PCI slots built in on the motherboard, no PCI Express, so we are stuck with using SATA 1. And despite what people might think about these cheaper King Spec drives, they're not too bad. They make a pretty decent upgrade for an older PC, and the best thing is they're pretty cheap. You can probably get this one for like 15 to 20 bucks off Amazon. I'll post the link in the description if you want to check it out. But I have my timer out right here. We're going to go ahead and time how long it takes to get from boot to the login screen. I'm going to include the power on self-test as well because that just makes things a lot easier. I'm going to power the system on now, and I'm going to start the timer. And the computer is right next to the microphone, so I apologize for any background noise. I can't really move the microphone too far away from the PC without kind of uh, messing up the setup here. All right, so to get to the login screen, boot time was a little over a minute, so not too bad. That's definitely bearable. I'm going to go ahead and log in. You can see how long it takes for all the stuff on the desktop to load up. It'll probably take around 30 seconds. I think I'll time that too just for reference. I'm going to reset the timer and log in. I'm going to hit enter and start the timer again, and I'm going to stop the timer when all the icons up here finally finish loading. Okay, so about a minute and a half to get fully up and running on this machine using the solid state drive. Last night, I was playing around with the system, and for the most part, I was pleasantly surprised at the performance. The only thing that really got me was the internet browsing, and that's just because we don't have enough RAM on the system. As you can see, we do have a half gig swap file, but that really didn't help. Uh, everything else, though, is very snappy. I'm going to navigate around some of the menus here right now, and you can see that everything's just kind of flowing like that. Um, I'm going to check what the display resolution is sitting at because I forgot, and also for you guys, if you're curious, there we go. 
So we're sitting at 1,366 by 760, and I believe that is the max resolution of this compact monitor. I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to close the terminal. I just brought this up so you guys can see that there is a swap file on this hard drive, and we're just going to play around with the system now. So the first thing I want to do is open up a Office program because I kind of view the machine T1090 at this point as an Office machine. Uh, it's really not going to be great for anything else, and even uh, as a Office machine, some people are going to find this a bit sluggish, but hey, I don't think it's too bad. So that didn't take too long for an office machine. I think that's definitely acceptable. Let's go ahead and try to type something in here. You all know what I'm going to type. Hello, YouTube. And we'll manipulate the text. That looks good. Let's change the font to something weird. All right. All working out just fine. Let's make it bold and italicize it. There we go. Hello, YouTube. I'm going to leave that open. We're going to do some multitasking here as well. So I'm just going to throw that off to the side, open up the uh, Excel equivalent, which is G-numeric. And as you can see, all this is open, opening up pretty quickly using this solid state drive. I'm really happy with the performance. Uh, I'm not really gonna do anything with this, just gonna leave it open. It's just gonna be one of those programs running in the background for our multitasking test. And let's go to the file manager, just navigate around, hit some files. I mean, yeah, as you can see, definitely usable. Uh, when we open up the internet browser, you'll see that things do slow down, but right now, definitely usable. It's just a general office machine. Everything's good. Browsing through some files, that all looks good. Yeah, so a solid state drive is definitely a great upgrade for any old computer, and I have said this in the past, but let me reiterate this. A really cheap, great upgrade if you want to add a couple extra years to your old PC. Let me go down here. Oh, one program that always gets us though is the Ubuntu Software Center. Let's open it up and see if the system can take it. I don't know why the Ubuntu Software Center is so demanding, but it is. There we go. I'm probably going to have to cut that because it took a while to open up, but it is finally opened up. I'm still waiting for the banner to show up here, but I'm not sure if we're going to get that at all. There we go our star apps and I'm going to pop open an instance of task manager just so we can see what's going on as far as resources are concerned. Okay, and I'm actually expecting us to uh, have maxed out the RAM by now and we're probably cutting into the swap file. You know what? Maybe not. It looks like the uh, RAM usage is sitting up about uh, 256 megabytes probably around there. Uh, if I hover over here, we can actually see. Yeah, there we go. So we're using about half of the 384 megabytes in the system. Let's get crazy and open up the internet browser. Uh, everything's probably going to go absolutely horrible from here, but let's try it anyway. Yeah, so with the web browser open right now, things have started to slow down quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and close out everything else because the web browser is just taking up way too much RAM. I, I wish I had some extra PC-133 sitting in the back, but I don't. I freed up some RAM and the system has become a little more responsive, so let's just try browsing the web. I'm going to hit my website first. This is probably another one of those things I'm going to have to cut because it is taking forever. To the performance is definitely worse than the Raspberry Pi that we tested out the other day. I think it loaded up uh, with this in like 10 seconds uh, total. This is just taking forever. There we go. The page has finally finished loading and navigating it is pretty painful. I'm trying to scroll through it and it's not smooth at all. Really, really jerky and sometimes it doesn't even respond. There we go. Finally got it to respond. Um, so on my primary site, not too good. Uh, my secondary site is a little bit lighter on resources. So I'm going to head over to that. Navigating the archive site is definitely a bit smoother. This site tends to be a little bit lighter on the web browser. And as you can see, we can click on these links and navigate around it just fine. I'm going to jump to YouTube now. Don't want to spend too much time on internet browsing because the hard drive is not really going to make it that much better uh, until we actually start cutting into the page file. And even then, uh, even with this SSD, it's still pretty slow. So I'm going to navigate to YouTube now. We'll probably open up a video if it opens up at all. Uh, and then we'll look at a couple other things after that. Of course, my camera cut out, so I got to go see how much footage I lost there. It only films in 10-minute segments and it doesn't like start again, so it's really annoying. 
Okay, so the system is really losing it right now. We're locking up all over the place, and I think I'm going to have to exit out of this. Uh, for, we can forget about YouTube videos with this system. I wish I had some more RAM laying in the back once again, but this board's extremely picky. I do have some PC-133 back there, but the board won't take it. Uh, I'm not sure what brand that RAM is, but the board does not like it, and the system will not boot with it. So that's going to be pretty much about it. As I'm talking now, I'm going to go through here and pop open a bunch of applications just to show you how that solid state drive is faring. Uh, and I might get distracted at some point, so give me a break. I'm just going to pop open whatever I see. Uh, and we're going to go through here. So yeah, definitely a significant performance increase with the solid state drive. Now, adding a solid state drive to any old computer is usually a, uh, a pretty good idea unless you're, you know, don't, don't spend too much. But you can get a cheap one for like, you know, 15 to 20 bucks, just like the one I have here, this King Spec drive. And once again, the link for that drive will be in the description. Uh, it should still be up on Amazon. And I think they also make IDE versions of this drive too. So if you only have a uh, motherboard with a pad interface, you could also install a uh, solid state drive. They might be a little bit more. Uh, for some reason, you know, IDE drives tend to be uh, a bit more expensive, but it might be worth it to take a look at it. And, you know, with the solid state drive, I could definitely see this uh, system being usable for, you know, basic day-to-day -day tasks. As I said, office tasks for sure. Uh, definitely not great for heavy internet browsing. Maybe if you add another uh, 128 megabytes of RAM in this thing, uh, it might be a little bit better. But also, that Intel Celeron copper mine processors uh, is also holding the system back. So, so you would probably want to upgrade the processor with that. I think this thing can uh, take... Maybe like one of those uh, one gigahertz Pentium chips or or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head uh, what uh, socket this is. But as you can see, I'm just flying through here. All these applications are opening nice and quick. I'm trying to avoid the Ubuntu Software Center and the uh, Internet Browser because, as I said, those are just a little bit too demanding for this system. I hope you guys enjoyed this little experiment slash demo. I know a lot of you kind of wanted something like this. Um, and I don't really have too much time this weekend to, to get a big project out. So I, I opted to do something simple yet interesting. And I thought this fit the bill pretty well. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon affiliate link, which will be in the description. I feel like I'm opening the same applications over and over again. I'm trying to switch it up, but uh, I'm just missing them. And I think that's, oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe, of course, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel. And that's going to be about it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology. Hopefully next week we can get some kind of a cool garage sale find or something like that. Maybe I'll uh, do uh, the penny experiment, except using a GPU. I don't know. I got a couple ideas. Got to wait till next week to find out, though, guys. And don't forget to like the Facebook page. That's how you're going to get all the latest updates. I will see you guys next time.